Welcome to Excel Business Statistical Analysis video number 48. And in this video, we're still talking hypothesis testing, the T distribution, but this time we'll do a two tail test. Hey, we're talking about hypothesis testing for the T distribution. This is our third example, and we're going to do a two-tail test. Here's our situation. A report stated that the national mean price for used cars is $9,500. You want to determine if the Seattle area mean price of used cars is different from the national mean. At an alpha of 0.01, is the mean price for Seattle used cars different from the national average? All right, as always, we want to talk about our point of view, what we're considering in our goal, the point of view. Seattle area researcher who wants to compare national mean used car prices to Seattle's. We are considering the population of Seattle used car prices. And our goal is to run a hypothesis test to provide statistical evidence to determine whether Seattle used auto prices are different from the national mean. Now, we're determining different from, so that means if it's below a significant amount or above a significant amount, then we want to reject the null hypothesis. So that means we're really interested in starting with the null hypothesis. Now a lot of the examples we've done, I think this is the sixth example, we've always started with the alternative, meaning that we start with a comparative operator. But here, this is different from, so we just say, hey, well, if it's different from, then the null is going to be equal. So the mu used auto price in Seattle will be equal to, and we'll have our hypothesized mean, and I'll do that down here, of uh, 9,500. And that means if this is equal, this is going to be not equal. I'm going to put space, and then I'm going to use the Excel symbol, less than, greater than. That means not. All right, so there's our null and all alternative. We're going to do alpha. We're going to be really sure, remember, the lower the alpha, the less chance we have of making a type 1 error, which is rejecting the null hypothesis even though it's true. All right, let's go ahead and make some calculations. We don't have sigma, so we're going to use our t distribution. We have to calculate sample standard deviation, stdev.s. Shift enter. Looks like we have sample standard deviation of 2,400, almost six bucks. Our sample size, we'll use count because we're counting numbers. Control shift down arrow, shift enter, 75 degrees of freedom. That'll help us determine which T distribution we're going to use. So we take N minus the number of samples, our mean, control shift down arrow, shift enter. Alpha, we have that from up here, 0 0.01, we're going to be real sure. Type of test, this is going to be a two-tail. Our standard error, we take our S divided by square root. How about SQ tab, square root of our N. That's the standard deviation for the sampling distribution of X bar. So when we calculate in the numerator our sampling error, we divide it by that standard deviation, and that gives us our test statistic, our T test statistic, which tells us how many standard deviations above or below hypothesized mean we are. So we're 1.52. We're above. Now here's our picture. Anything, we haven't calculated our uh, critical values, but there's our alpha, and it's very small, 0 0.01 divided by 2 is 0 0.005. So anything between these two markers, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Anything above or below, we reject the null and accept the alternative hypothesis. All right, let's come down here. And we want to calculate our p. Now remember, for p, we have a 1.52. So if we say p value, it's going to say wherever it is, that value or more. Because it's a two-tail, we have to double it. All right, so you ready? Equals, and we're going to have to do 1 minus t dot, and we use the dist. Our test statistic is that. Remember, we have to do 1 minus because if we put this in, it'll calculate from negative infinity all the way up to there. And we were interested in the upper part, comma, our degrees of freedom. And it's cumulative. Now, that gives us just the upper amount, 0 0.066. We have to double that. And we have to do this subtraction first. So we're going to have to put this in parentheses. 
I kind of like this way. We know we have to double it, but this 1 minus the dist, whether we're using t or the norm.s, this 1 minus is how we've been doing it, so it's consistent. However, there is a new function. It is specifically for the t dist, there's a two tail. It's going to require simply the test statistic and the degrees of freedom. Now, there is a possibility when you're running a two-tail that this could be negative or positive. And this function, and in my notes and over here, this t statistic has to be on the upper end. So if you are running an experiment or you have a template, this could be negative or positive. So you could put the abs function around it. It just, abs is just absolute value, which means distance from zero comma, and we're not going to run into situation here because this is on the upper end, but it just as well could have shown up on the lower end. All right, and then we have our degrees of freedom. So one advantage of t dot dist dot two tail is that you just have to throw in the t from the upper and the degrees of freedom. All right, and you get the same thing. You don't have to double it. You don't have to remember to multiply it by two. Either way you do it, we can clearly see the p-value is gigantic compared to the 0 0.01. So we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. So we're in this region right here. We can use the critical value. We want to determine this value and this value. Equals t dot, and we want the inverse. We want the probability. Now we're given 0 0.01, and I need half of that. So I'm going to say the alpha divided by 2. Now this gives me from negative infinity up to that point, which is great because this will give us the lower critical value. I forgot the degrees of freedom, minus 2.64. That's this hurdle here, and the hurdle on the upper end is 2.64, so our test statistic is not past that. Now, to list the one on the upper end, the curves are symmetric. I'm going to say minus that. Now, notice I didn't type an equal sign, but Excel will know to put that equal sign in. This is fine. This is consistent with the way we've been uh, doing it so far in this class. There is a t dot inverse dot two tail. So equals t dot inverse, and there's a two tail. The cool thing about this is you don't have to divide by two because the function explicitly is for two tail. So the probability means please give me alpha and then the degrees of freedom. So and this is going to calculate the positive. So that's why I put it in the upper critical value. And then to get the one on the low end, since it's symmetrical, I say minus that. Exactly the same numbers. Let's look at our conclusion. Because our p-value is bigger than our alpha, we fail to reject clearly. That is gigantic compared to that. Because our test statistic is between our critical values, there's our test statistic. And it's between these. We fail to reject. The sample evidence does not suggest that the mean price for used cars in Seattle area is different from the national average. Set a different way at a 0.05, oops, that's 01. Significance level, our sample mean of uh, 9,923 does not provide statistical evidence to show that the mean Seattle used price is different from the national mean. And finally, we do run this uh, type 2 risk of a type 2 error, not accepting the alternative hypothesis the mean is different from when in fact it is different from. All right, so those are the last three videos, three examples of the t distribution and the t functions. See you next video.